Hello everyone, today I want to talk about another technique in After Effects, which is quite popular among motion designers, and that is how to make the paper fly in the air. So if you like one of these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification. Okay, for doing so, I select the first paper, and as you see, I've put it in a comp. I open it. I set the comb larger than the layer so that when the layer rotates, it doesn't go out of the scene. I open its rotation, set it to 1, and create a keyframe in the beginning. And then on the second form, I set it to 0, so that the paper rotates once during this interval. After doing so, check if the paper goes outside of the scene. If I felt like that might happen, I just have to scale it down a bit. Well, I go to the main comp, and I put the layer outside of the scene. I create the initial keyframe. Then, after 4 seconds, I place it to the right outside the scene. As you can see, it's moving like this. However, the animation path is straight and it's not good. So, I want to curve it. But before when the layer is located in the middle, I create another keyframe. I make the keyframe easy ease. Then I go to the graph editor and select the middle keyframe. By dragging these handles, I can decrease the speed of this keyframe. Let's have a look. As you see, this layer enters the scene quickly and then pauses here just a little bit. And then again, it leaves instantly. Let's back to the keyframes. Then I curve this path slightly to make it more interesting. Look, this layer enters the scene, then it slows down here, and then again it leaves quickly. I think it's too big, so I make it smaller. Now I go to the effects and presets panel and type the CC cylinder and apply it to the layer. As soon as I apply this to the layer, this effect will give it a cylindrical look, but I don't want this. And before I change how this looks, as you can see the edges of the paper isn't inside the comp. So I go to the paper comp and make it smaller a bit more. Once I did it, you can see it's fixed now. Well, I go to the CC cylinder effect. As you see, the first option is radius. What it does is increase or decrease the radius of this cylinder. I increase it so it wouldn't look like a cylinder. I think this is fine. I don't have anything to do with its position, because I already animated the position of this comb and created this path. If I change these values, as you see, it goes out of this area, and I don't want this to happen. Okay, I open its rotation section. As you see, I can animate the paper on every axis and have control over them. I place the indicator here and I create the first keyframes and change their values as I want. I go to the end of the animation and again change these values. Then I place these keyframes at the beginning and at the end of the animation. Let's check it out. As you can see here, the paper has light and shadow, which I don't want it. Under the light and shading section of the same effect, I can remove both of them. For that, I set the light intensity to zero. And in the shading section, I set the ambient to 90, so the overall brightness would be alright. In order to make the paper animation look more natural, I can add the wave warp effect to it. As you see by applying this effect to the layer, some waves will be created. By changing the wave widths, I can change the widths of the waves. If I set it to a higher number, around 100, I think that should do the job. 
I think I should set it to Navy. Well, now it looks good to me. I need to apply another thing to this layer so it would create a shadow on the wall. I type the drop shadow event and apply it to the layer. I lowered the opacity a bit. Then I set the direction like this. I also increased the distance. And for the softness, I increase it, so the shadow becomes fade. I think for this should be enough. Everything that I apply to the first paper should be applied to the second and the third paper as well. The only difference is that the animation path and the rotation settings of the effects must be changed so that the movement of each paper is different from the other so finally we can achieve better results. And as a last point, I frequently receive inquiries from individuals who have recently begun using After Effects and are curious about the path to becoming a ProMotion designer. It's crucial to understand that this journey necessitates extensive experience and training, spanning several years. However, I've tried to expedite this process through the creation of the Motion Hero course. The course includes exercises meticulously designed to help you attain desired outcomes efficiently, eliminating unnecessary time wastage. So if you wish to learn more, click here.